Hey guys, Britta here. Welcome back to Farming Simulator 2019. Here we are for part number one of our brand new series, Marwell Manor. So just starting off here at our humble little house. Take a quick look around our farm. I'm starting this on easy farmer mode, which I think is well the easiest level whenever you start a new game. That crow was sitting in the weird spot. So we've got a house behind us, another little house here, I guess, like a guest house or even maybe our hired worker's house. We can class this as. Um, then we've got the road in to the farm. This little area here, which is to not use this water for drinking. Yep, good. Don't do that. So this little shed here is... Um, doesn't seem to be much. Just like a storage shed, like a workshop. But I don't think there's really any room to get into here. To be honest. Um, we get the milk from here, from our cow barn. So this is a, our manure spot. Um, actually, there you go. We get in through that gate. Um, where the milk will come through, we open this gate, which I won't open now, but <clears throat> enter the cow area, which through here where we put our straw and our food, I believe, and we have our animal dialogue um, in that spot just there. What I might do is I might just grab... Um, let's just grab one cow and just see how it looks. So one cow for our farm out here wandering around doing her thing old Bessie um, I think we come over here and this might be where we put our water for the cows we jump the fence we've got another water spot here which will be for the sheep I believe so this will be the sheep area we come through here and mow this and collect this grass if we need to um, food spot for the sheep um, this might be the spot where we drop the hay I guess um, through here jump the fence Got our animal dialogue, obviously our food there. Um, this is our bunker. One of our bunkers. Actually, yeah, our only bunker. Through here, which is around the other side of our house here, we've got all our equipment um, and a shed here with our John Deere in here and our Fent tractor as well. I was thinking in this shed here we could probably store like straw bales, hay and silage bales in here and that sort of thing. Um, we run this way, so we've got our sheep over there, we've got another storage area here, then we have where our wool will spawn I assume because of the wool pallet just there. Run up the hill we have our little workshop where we can fix our equipment, sell our equipment and that sort of thing. A whole heap of scrap and stuff left behind. Hot air balloon over there, so we go this way we've got our silos, so where we dump off and where we collect. And in through here we've got another massive shed. Only this door on the left opens though. Oh no, there we go. Now, I couldn't get that open before. Both doors open. There we go. And another big shed here with more storage. And um, a few fields around for us to use. So if we go back to the menu, we can have a look. And we've got field 19, 18 and 15. Uh, at the moment, they all need to be ploughed. Um, that's ready to harvest. And I believe the grass... Field 19 is ready to go as well. It is perfect. So what I want to do straight away is we're going to do a John Deere farm. So I'm going to get rid of all the equipment that um, we don't need. And I'm going to pick up um, some John Deere stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into this guy. I'm not sure if this is the one that allows me to have... Um, Front, front load of forks and stuff on. So I'll have to swing him into here and have a quick look. See if we customise this guy. Yeah, front loader attachy. Yes. Wheel set up. We'll just go standard. Beautiful. Because I want to be able to use one of these guys as a front loader. So let me go in as well. We're going to borrow as much money as we can. Because um, I want to, I want to try and buy everything and not actually have to lease anything. I'm trying to avoid leasing anything at all. So we should get 1.4 mil. Ooh, maybe even a bit more than that. 1.5. Maybe 1.6. Oh, geez, we're able to borrow a lot. 1.7. 1.8. Oh, yeah, I think. Um, Let's just borrow up to 2 million, well, 2 million in our pocket. 
Um, I don't think we're going to need that much, but you never know. Right, so what I want to do is look at our equipment first. I'm going to get the Horsch Joker 12RT, which is a, looks like a cultivator, but it is actually a plow. So I'm going to buy that. I'm going to go through and grab the cedar. We do have a big, big John Deere cedar here somewhere, the DB90. So I'll buy that as well. So I've got our ability to plow and seed, which will seed directly without cultivating. Actually, did that say cultivating or plowing? Yeah, the does, but I think we we'll still need to plow to get the field to where it needs to be. So um, crop protection, um, wasn't going to do any of that yet. I think for this guy, I'm going to grab um, John Deere DN 345, buy him. So he'll be our lime and possibly our fertilizer spreader as well. No manure, no slurry tanks, no weeders. I'm going to grab some mowers. We've got the John Deere rear mower here, John Deere front mower, um, tedders. I, I want to buy a tedder as well and also um, a decent sized wind rower. So I'm going to grab the pottinger. Then I feel like, um, I mean, I like this guy, but I'd rather grab the hibiscus. 15-15 from Lely, or Lely. Uh, loading wagons, I'm not going to worry about because I want to try and bail everything. So I'm going to go with the John Deere 1424C as our baler. Then I want to get a bail trailer, but I don't want... I sort of don't want to auto-load. I want to sort of do something a little bit different and do it more sort of realistic. So I want to get this guy, the stacker. So we can stack the bales, um, and obviously we've got our front loader as well. So I'm going to grab our John Deere front loader attachment. I'm going to grab the lizard fork with claws for our front loader, because that's going to be able to pick up all three pretty easily. Uh, forestry animals, I'm not going to worry too much about animals as yet. Animal transport, we're not going to worry about that yet either. Um, Miscellaneous. Let's have a quick look. Some trailers and stuff. I don't think there's anything else in there that we really need. Um, as I said, I need a trailer to store our bales and stuff on, but none of these guys I want to use. So I'm going to go. Um, actually, I'm going to grab the Bass Escalante. I'm going to go John Deere rims and John Deere side. Uh, wheel accessories, I'm not going to worry about. Cover, yes. Pneumatic system, no. So the cover, we've got Randon, Randon 2, Koama, Koamo, I think, Aguatoni, Cocal, Fontanella, G7, Hungaro, IC, Itayobi, Chordetto, Multitrans, or no. Um, I really don't know. Um, G7, that'll do. I think that looks alright. Well, let's buy that. So I want to go in straight away into the trucks because this, this um, Scania, I think, fits reasonably well with um, the sort of map we're going for. I know it's not a John Deere, but we can make it look like a John Deere. I think I just did standard lizard for the other guy. Cab design so we can get the deflector, the spoiler. Or the standard. I think we'll go the deflector. Wheel accessories I don't need. 4x2 I think would be plenty big enough because I've only got like a small sort of area we're running through. We've also got um, this Freightliner service truck. Um, obviously we're not going to purchase this now but that's something we can look at later on. That's probably just more for fun than um, anything too serious I guess. Um, all these guys, we probably don't really need anything else. Uh, crop protection, I did pick up the Uniport 2000 Plus. This thing actually looks pretty cool. It does have, um, not really sure what this changes, but I think it um, gives you these weird sort of strobe lights and stuff, but it does look pretty cool. 
All right, so I'm going to grab the John Deere 9R. I feel like we definitely need to... Uh, Three-point hitch is definitely what we need. At the back, Firestone Michelin, a good year. I think we'll go good year because I don't want to have... Um, I don't want to have double wheels. The single wheels will be fine. I think we're going to max it right out so it's as strong as possible. We'll buy that. And I think, as I said, we've got the 6R John Deere. Um, where is that? It's a medium sized tractor. So, how much pulling power has he got? Only 142, but I think we did. So, I think, well, let's have a look. 6R, 280 horsepower. I think we're probably going to need another tractor. So I think I was going to go the 8R, max it out. Will, Michelin or Trollobogs. I like Michelin. I'll just go wide tyres. Buy him as well. Uh, running low on money, we're going to need to get a harvester. So um, I did have this guy here. John Deere. Turbo 8820, but I don't think it's going to be quite big enough. But again, I mean, that's 14,000, but it's more the headers that I'm sort of going to have to have a look at. Um, 7.6 meters, 13.7, that's only 9.1, so I'm probably better off going with the John Deere, the bigger harvester, which is um, 3. Oh, 390,000, so we're going to have to borrow a little bit more money. Um, let's grab as much as we can. There we go. We're going to be pretty tight on money, actually. Um, headers, where are we? 89,000, so let's just grab the biggest harvester. I don't want twin wheels. I think just wide tyres will do, because we don't have a massive... Actually, we can't buy it yet because we don't have enough room. So we don't have a massive amount of um, room in the farm. So let's take a quick look at this. Actually, it's not a bad looking rig. Sounds pretty good too. I'll take that cover off. So that's one thing I was sort of wondering where the cover actually went when we took it off. I'm going to slow us down. I'm going to limit our speed to um, just 40 kilometers an hour. So I think this definitely feel like this fits with the map, which is pretty cool. So I think our first job is pretty much going to be to mow that field. Um, we're going to have to get a baler as well. We're going to have to get um, a wrapper and stuff eventually, but I think we're probably just going to have to go with um, making some hay bales, and we're going to get plenty of straw bales out of this field. So that's probably what we're going to need to do the first episode. We're going to have to plow and lime and all that sort of stuff in this field, so we've got plenty to do and not a great deal of money um, now that we've spent every bloody cent we've got. Don't have a lot of money left. So obviously we're not going to need this truck straight away, so I'm going to park him up in here, right next to our silo. We know he'll be in here, out of the way. I think everything seems a little bit dark at the moment. I don't know if that's um, the time of day or if it's something else so it must be the time of day All right, what I might do is I might jump out and go reset you so we go truck big truck littler truck and littlest truck might be just a little bit easier for us to work it all out alright so we'll grab Front loader attachment. I don't think this guy will be able to mow. 
so he'll pretty much just maybe pick up the tethering stuff. It's definitely going to be strong enough to be able to strong enough to be able to pull along the plough or anything or the cedar. So pretty much what we're going to have to do. Uh, okay, so this is the new whoop, the new mod that I haven't really had a look at before. It's up, down, forward, backwards. You got spike in, spike out. So that is um, pretty cool. Just gonna sit that there for now. Let's go back to this guy. Um, we're sort of just gonna need to get things moving. Get things moved back to the farm, which I might do the majority of it off camera, but I want to try and get everything brought ready to go that way you guys know exactly what we've got for the farm and that sort of thing so we'll move this guy over here out of the way jump in our John Deere 8400 grab our rear mower and our front mower that way we can get ready to head off and start mowing um, that field Before we do, we'll jump in and grow harvester. So I don't know, what's that? 10,000, 14,000. I don't know. 625 Excellentius, 5,700, 608C. Um, sort of don't know how much we're going to need as a rostal mash like I want to sort of that's going to stay black if we get that one though isn't it 12 don't know what the difference is really obviously I sort of want to get one that we can turn into a trailer that's probably the main thing so it's going to be one of these two, unfortunately, if we wanted to go that way, but probably not going to be a good idea. So this is a really, really old school one, but I think we might be able to buy that anyway. Let's grab the um, smaller John Deere T560, Trelleborgs, Michelin, standard, wide, crawler. We'll just go wide, 151,000. Um, headers. I said we've got this guy 7.6 meters. That is 13.7, which is massive. Or well, this guy 5,800. Hopefully, hopefully we'll be able to um, attach these guys together. I don't see any reason why we can't, but there may be an issue. Unfold the house, so just make sure this is going to work before we perfect. All right, so we will move this harvester sort of over here out of the way. There we go, shut him down. Oh, it's not what I wanted to do. Up and out, John D 8400R. We'll go over and we'll start mowing because we've spent a fair bit of time already. Um, this episode sort of just mucking around. So slow down to 40 kilometers an hour. I know it's probably not a um, necessity for us to do this sort of speed, but I just feel like um, 40 through here is probably more than enough. So I know we've got a lot of auto-loading trailers and that sort of stuff. I just feel like it's, it's kind of cheating, it's kind of not cheating, but each to their own. Some people like it, some people don't. I just feel like um, if I can mow and stack the bales and load them back into the area where we want them exactly, Sorry, I just had this weird flash going on. It must be my TV. Um, 
Yeah, so load them exactly where we want them back at the farm. It's probably going to be a lot easier than using an auto load trailer. So, yeah, and I, I sort of want to go back to doing things properly again and um, not using as many auto load things and trying to make it like as if we're starting to do things a little bit more realistically, I suppose. Alright, so I'll unfold this guy. Gonna start you up, lower you, start you up and lower you as well. well let's get going. So I do know that these, um, these John Deere mowers don't work 100% with a hired worker. We seem to have issues when we get to one end of the field. Um, the worker will stop, but he won't turn around for some strange reason. So, I don't know. I don't really know what the issue is, to be honest. It also might bring up the map. Yeah, the little version of the map, that way... Um, when I get set up, I can sort of try and start running like a manual GPS. Um, I do have the GPS mod downloaded, but I haven't bothered to use it as yet. Um, I kind of feel like we're doing alright with using our manual GPS like we have in our Rags to Riches series, so we don't really need to be spending an extra 15,000 pounds on buying a GPS for each piece of equipment. This is a uh, massive grass field as well. So if I set up now at just 90 degrees, the bottom left, you see where it says 90 degrees, and I run straight, then when I turn around, if I run at 270 degrees, alongside where we just went, we'll get a proper, a proper pass where we don't miss anything. So if I try and line ourselves up, 270, there we go, and run straight, it should be perfect, we shouldn't have any dramas at all. So hopefully you guys, um, you're going to enjoy this series, unfortunately it's going to replace that Michigan Supply Series, but we just had way too many um, save game issues with that map so not quite sure if it was me if it was mods if it was just something random I really don't know so um, but I have since heard that a lot of other people have been having issues as well with the Michigan the Michigan map so yeah I figure Marwell Manor new map looks looks does look really 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 good so give it a crack and hopefully we don't have any issues. And some, the last issue we had with the Michigan Dairy Map was I loaded into our save game, uh, went to check on our cows and our dairy barns, all eight of our dairy barns had just disappeared, nowhere to be seen. I have no idea why that had happened, but um, unfortunately it happened. So everything was gone. We had no cows anywhere, we had no barns, we had manure on the ground, so I was kind of like, what the hell happened? But um, I couldn't couldn't work it out, I re-downloaded the mod for the barns, just to make sure it wasn't an issue with the mod, and um, that didn't help either. Like I overrided the old mod with what I think might have been the updated version of the mod, um, and that didn't do anything, so... Yeah, I'm not quite sure what actually happened. So it could have been an issue with the map, could have been an issue with mods, but yeah, that was like the third issue, maybe even the fourth issue that I've had with that map, so I just figured we'll move on, something new, start all over again and um, see what happens. So I think it's going to take us a fair while to um, get all this cut, but it will be worth it in the end, we should get fairly decent yield out of this field, so can't complain. I'm going to do a run up and a run back down, and then I think I'll turn around and go 
um, east-west again. Oh, there we go. And then we'll head back to the west. It is. It's west on the map. Head back to the west. Once again, set ourselves up at about 270, 270.0, off we go. So I think, um, have a look at our soil composition. Not all of this is a full field, so I might need to bring the plough in and create a full field of grass, and then um, we're going to have to lime it and all that sort of stuff as well. So it's going to be plenty of work in this field to get the grass going again. We've got the other stuff down there we need to harvest. We've got the field in the middle which we need to plough and um, seed and that sort of thing. Um, I guess one other thing I want you guys to let me know is would you like me to run the game at times one speed, like real speed? Or should I run the game at times five or times 15 and just get as much done as we can in a day? and then go from there so make it so it's a little bit more realistic like um, this whole field like in real life might take us a whole day to harvest and to collect all the bales and all that sort of stuff and then same as the middle field might take us a whole day to actually plow and then seed it but then the third field a whole day to do that sort of thing so we're sort of progressing more in-game days than we would if we had it at single speed Try and have it more realistic to life, if you know what I mean. So, yeah, you guys let me know if you think that's a good idea. And um, we get enough votes on going at times 5, times 15. We'll go with it. So let me know in the comments. Times 1, times 5, or times 15. What do you think would be best for us to do for this series? Um, if we do times 5, we might get two episodes per in-game day. If we do times 15, I think it might be one episode per in-game day. Of a, around about an hour, roughly. So, I'll have to, I'll quickly have a look. Um, work it out with my calculator. So, if you go, so around about 45 minutes. Times 15 is 675 675, and if we divide that by 60, it's about, yeah, 11.25 hours in-game. So, I mean, that is probably, even times 5, it's probably close to being a full in-game day, whereas if we had uh, 45 times 15, divided by 60, no, that's what I had before, 45 times, times 15, divided by 60, 11.25 in game hours per episode, if we have 45 times 5 divided by 60, it's around about 4 in game hours, so you probably have about 3 episodes per day at times 5, 1 episode per day at times 15, so yeah, you guys let me know, let me know what you think will be best, and um, as I said, whatever gets the most votes, we'll, um, we'll run with it's going to run this way for a lap just to change it up a little bit. So I think we're going to probably get maybe half of the field. So maybe all this weird little bit from sort of over where that hedge is all the way up to there and around here. We'll do this as hay. And then the rest down the other end we'll do as... Um, if we can, silage bales, if not just grass bales. We will need some grass, but I prefer to turn them into silage bales, of course. Get all through those weeds. I don't think we really need to mow that spot, but it'll be a bit difficult for us to actually come back and collect the grass through there. Oh, so there we go. Come back down to here. Run through at about 180. I don't. I think that'll be. I'll probably be bouncing off the tree if we stayed at 180 degrees. So. Just run through 
on straight through. Draw a run straight down and we'll jump back onto that. That other east-west, west-east, whatever you want to call it, run and continue on doing that. So I think this episode's pretty much just going to be us mowing this field. We're probably not going to get much else done after it. A little bit of a look around the farm. A little bit of uh, purchasing new tractors and new equipment for the farm and then a little bit of mowing and I think that's pretty much all we're going to get done. Time um, certainly flies when we start mowing. So I think maybe, personally I think maybe times five. Um, because we've seen how long this takes. If we did times 15, we wouldn't have even got this field done. So times five will probably give us enough time to cut the grass in an episode, bale it or tether it, windrow it in another episode, bale it and collect it in the one after that, possibly. Um, and then one episode we might be able to get a whole harvest done, a whole field ploughed, whole field limed. I, mean, I, I really don't know exactly how much we're going to get done, but I think times five um, it'd be a lot better than Tom's 15, but as I said, you guys and the subscribers, you guys have just as much input as me, so let me know what you think, and we'll um, sort of have a vote, have a vote on it, whatever gets the most votes we'll go with. So let's look at um, growth, probably halfway through the field, so if we cut this in half, this is hay, this is grass or silage. I think that's probably going to be pretty even. That'll give us plenty of both. I might be able to do um, a run around the field um, and then hire a worker to do tethering while we come over here and windrow this side. So we just sort of kill two birds with one stone. I might get um, Farmer Bob back. Or even um, how about Farmer Jacko? We'll call him Jacko. Farmer Jacko after a subscriber of mine. Well, um, I know he'll be pretty stoked about that. Farmer Jacko can be our little offside or any little house over there. So we can use him to come back and help tether and we can win row and or vice versa I think probably getting him to tether would be the way to go so I think I might do another run around sort of this way get part of this field done Um, yeah, get part of this field, this field here mowed first so we can get the guy over here tethering while we're um, finishing off mowing the other end and actually wind rowing as well. So we're going to take him a little while to get the tethering and stuff done. I know we're missing a little bit of grass there, but it'll be fine. I'm going to back down and just get this other side as well. So hopefully we can tater some of that grass. We might be able to get all of it. but um, As I said, we, I'd love to be able to hire a worker to get this done, but I just don't think the hired workers worked very well with these mowers. Just set him up at 180 degrees from here and that'll work alright I think. So we're getting pretty close with our timer, 10 minutes to go. So if I can get this other field done in 10 minutes, so we'll be able to get our hired worker Farmer Jacko down here and um, get him helping. I think we should get this done in 10 minutes. Might turn um, the map off now. We 
missing little bits there. Come back and finish that last little bit off at the end. It's kind of why I like using the manual GPS and sort of just going from left to right or up and down to kind of minimise um, the amount that we miss. Certainly GPS mode or even course play would be a lot better but still not quite sure how course play is running if it's the few updates have been a lot better I sort of I feel like I want to sort of stick away or stay away from it um, until it's sort of in its final stages and no longer in beta mode so I know that it's sort of really ready to go that way we're not going to have too many dramas with it I don't really want to have course play causing dramas with our save games and all that sort of stuff which I don't think it has to anybody's save games as yet but um I guess you never know when something's in beta mode every time it gets an update they usually fix some things and then end up with errors in other spots too so kind of want to be careful with what we um, do and don't do as far as that goes um, also we've got fuel tank down here we've got a lime um, silo as well so I'm going to need to put in some silos as well, fertiliser for seed, for liquid fertiliser, for um, herbicide and that sort of thing. So it's another thing we're going to have to get done, probably not this episode, but obviously when we get to that stage that we're going to start seeding and spraying and that sort of thing, I might have to do it then, but I'll try not to do it before we have to. Alright, so hopefully um, you guys are all doing really well. We've cracked the 10k subscriber mark. Um, still looking at doing our 10k subscriber um, special with a giveaway of a copy of FS19 on PC. Maybe even two copies. Maybe even three copies. I don't know. I'm going to have to weigh up um, what we can give away and all that sort of stuff. I might even give away, you know, a copy of FS19 digital copy and then maybe even like a $20 steam voucher and then a $10 steam voucher for second and third place um, something along those lines sort of I want to try and give back to you guys because you guys have certainly made um, made me happy it made me realize that um, I can actually be a YouTuber. Um, I've, when I first started with FS17 and YouTube, I never thought that I would uh, get very far. But um, luckily, now that FS19's out and I can do all these really awesome custom builds, that's what's brought most of you guys to the channel, which I'm absolutely stoked about. And we've got over 10k subs now. My YouTube income has gone up fairly dramatically, actually. It has so. I'm, I used all that YouTube money to put back into the channel, so whether it be, you know, new headphones, um, video editing software, or a webcam or something later on, new games definitely comes from the YouTube funds, like the income that I make. The FS19 copies will come from the YouTube income, so at this point in time, all the YouTube income will go back into the channel, some way or another, sort of give back to you guys. Um, hopefully one day I can have that many subscribers and have that good an income that I can do this full time. That'll be um, absolutely ideal, but I don't know if that will ever happen. But um, we can always we can always hope. Wait and see. Wait and see what happens. Never say never. It may happen one day. That was um, a terrible turn, wasn't it? Missed heaps then. Another run up, another run back down. Trying to fix up those bits that I missed. And that last little bit, and then I'll take ourselves back over there, jump into our little tractor, our 6R, and um, grab the tether, bring the tether over. 
start tethering the field. So that little area there, I think we might be able to put in some sheds and stuff just for all this mowing equipment. Alright, so I'll head up this way. I'll uh, plonk the mower down here somewhere, sort of out of the way. Jump through to John Deere 6R. We'll have to back up and grab our tether. Definitely head back to the farm and drop off this front loader attachment. And then um, get the tethering started. And then I'll try and get all the other stuff back to the farm as well. I think um, our harvester should be alright heading all the way down through here. Um, these, a lot of these hedges and stuff don't have hitboxes in them, which is good. So our harvester should be able to bring the header through here anyway. Without having too many dramas. Another massive grass field there. Another massive grass field here, so there's grass fields everywhere. Obviously we don't need to leave it as a grass field, we can um, change it to whatever we want it to be. We definitely won't get a harvester in there, not with that little gate. Jump inside. That is pretty cool. I really like that. So there's our lime tower there. So we're definitely going to need to do our seed and stuff somewhere. So I might drop this um, bale fork and stuff off just in here. So we know where it is when we need to bring our bales in. As I said, we'll go and get one row, one full headland. Okay, one full headland done with the tether, and then um, we'll hire a worker and let him do his thing. Farmer Jacko can get out of bed and actually help us. So we go up this way, set the full headland, and then hire a worker, see if he will actually help us out. Um, what I might do between episodes is just finish off the mowing on the other side. So I think we're pretty much just about out of time. So if I can get that done between episodes, then when we come back next episode, we can windrow and... Um, start to collect the grass and stuff so what I'm going to do is I'm definitely going to go and turn plant withering off um, I just feel like if we're going to go with um, what I said at times five we definitely don't want plant withering on all right so we'll head I think I'm gonna to have to move over a bit there we go head back at 180 so everything else is going to be um, plant withering off, crop destruction, periodic ploughing, lime, weeds are all on, all these are off. So we're going to have to pay him and also or the hide worker, pay the hide worker and also fill them up. If they're seeding or fertilising or liming or whatever, they're going to have to be filled up and everything. So try and make things as realistic as possible. Try and get through here. Try not to hit the hedges too much. Um, so yeah, it's going to be pretty much realistic. We're going to have easy economic difficulty. So if you guys want an easy, medium, or hard, let me know as well. So we'll have um, a vote for times one, times five, or times fifteen speed. Also have a vote for our economic difficulty. So easy, medium, or hard. So you leave that in the comment section. Obviously, times one, times five, times fifteen for the speed that you think, and also easy, medium, or hard for the economic difficulty. All right, there's our timer. I knew it wasn't far away. And there's um, Pepper as well. She's giving me a whistle, let me know the timer's going off. Every time it goes off, she always whistles to it. 
Same as the bloody microwave. Whenever the microwave goes off or the oven goes off or whatever, she's always flattening out a whistle. Bit of a pain, but... Rightio, um, what I'll do is I'll get this hired worker, Farmer Jacko, helping us out. And um, get the other field mode, and then we'll come back next episode, as I said, and we'll try and windrow... Windrow, uh, the other field. Farmer Jacko might even be finished here, so we might have to... Uh, windrow both the fields but we'll um we'll work it out so as i said make sure you leave a comment let me know what you think we should do speed difficulty all that sort of stuff um leave it in the description or leave it in the description leave it leave a comment i should say and um if you're new to the channel guys and you haven't subscribed yet please do so it's been brito thanks for watching see you again soon